All right, I'm going to take a quick survey. How many of you find it hard to truly worship God and listen to him in a service that has bad music, bad lighting, or the worst, crooked chairs? <laughs> okay, I just like that. I'm extremely OCD, and when something's not right, I just want to scream sometimes. It's like, come on! How hard is it for you to sing in tune? <laughs> but oh man, when those harmonies are perfect and the lighting sets just the right mood, I can go all Pentecostal on <laughs> But is that the right attitude? Am I pursuing the right things? I think that so oftentimes we as Christians seek this perfect emotional atmosphere and the promises of it like the crying and the goosebumps and the shaking. And we seek this so much that we forget to pursue God's presence. Yes, being in the presence of God should be life-changing and we feel him, but then we need to go out and act upon what he's doing inside of us. So as I read the scriptures, I find one person who truly knew what it meant to be in the presence of God. That man was Moses. Moses experienced the presence of God many times. And the first time was at the burning bush. Exodus chapter 3 says that Moses is tending to the flocks of his father-in-law. When all of a sudden, out of the corner of his eye, he sees a burning bush that is not being consumed by the flame. He's like, that's not right. I'm going to go check it out. And picking up in Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, this happens. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush. Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. And then the Lord said, do not come near, take off your sandals, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. It's here that Moses first encounters the presence of God. And following this, God lays out this huge plan as how he's going to use Moses. Now, if this were merely an emotional experience, Moses he would have gotten up, he would have brushed off the dust, and he would have thought, wow, that was so cool, like we so often do when we come out of a worship experience. But here's the deal. Moses was pursuing the presence of God, so he came up out of the dust a changed man. And following this, Moses sets himself on the presence of God, and God uses Moses in the most amazing ways, causing the plagues that get Israel released from Egypt, causing Moses to receive the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, and the pinnacle of everything happens when Moses is so set on God's presence, so set on pursuing him, that the changes in his spiritual life are reflected by changes in his physical appearance, and his face glows with the glory of God. See, Moses was pursuing God's presence. Yes. But eventually, he was faced with a choice. Do I pursue God's presence, or do I pursue his promises? How many of you know that Moses never made it to the promised land? Yes, he didn't. See, if something were promised to me, I would do everything in pursuit of that promise. And Moses could have done that, but it would have cost him God's presence. In Exodus, chapter 33, verse 3, God says this to the Israelites, Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up with you, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. Just imagine the pressure on Moses to agree to that. But because he desired the presence of God, he intercedes for the Israelites and finishes with this in verse 15, And he said to the Lord, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. See, Moses sought God's presence first and foremost, not simply his promises. So in closing, I encourage you to ask some questions that I've had to ask myself. What do you pursue? Are you pursuing God's promises? Are you just seeking the emotional experience? Or are you like Moses, continually pursuing God's presence? with the constant and pure desire for him.